Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shirai and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the Competition Commission's order penalizing major cement manufacturers for cartelization. The order imposes exemplary cost on the cement producers. To discuss the issue, I have with me Mr. Vinod Dahl, former founder, chairperson, Competition Commission of India and Mr. Dhanendra Kumar, former chairman, Competition Commission of India. Now for the headlines. The Competition Commission holds 11 cement companies guilty of cartelization. The Commission imposes over 6,000 crore rupees as penalty. And the major violators include top cement producers Holsim, Lafaz, Jay Prakash, Ultratech, and ACC. The Monopoly and Cartelization Regulator Competition Commission has imposed an unprecedented penalty of over 6,000 crore rupees on 11 top cement manufacturers. The order includes the Indian arms of global leaders like Holsim and Lafarge, among others like Jay Prakash Associates, Ultratech, Ambuja and ACC. The Commission found them guilty of cartelization. Booming construction and infrastructure sectors help India emerge unsat from the global economic crisis. During this period, the cement prices in India were the highest in the world after Japan. A recent study sponsored by Parliamentary Standing Committee on Commerce had found that cement units pocketed high profits. Now these companies have to pay a price for illegally coordinating together to command maximum profits. The affected firms are Jay Prakash Associates, Ultratrack, Ambuja, ACC, Lakhwash India, Century Textiles, Madras Cements, Grassen Cements, now merged with Ultratech, India Cements, Benami Cement, JK Cement and the Cement Manufacturer Association which facilitated cartelization process. In the cement market, the large players, they normally fix the cement prices and the other intermediate and minor players, they follow them. So, the commission identified these nine, ten players who are the major players and they had meetings. After meetings, it was found that they used to increase the prices. According to the Parliamentary Standing Committee report of 2010, the manufacturers pocketed a profit up to 52 rupees per bag of cement, which consumers buy at an average market price of 244 rupees. The report also highlights the retail cement prices of 2005 as an indicator. During that year, the price of cement in India was 260 rupees, whereas the price of cement in our neighborhood Pakistan was between 170 to 180 rupees, and in China it was 140 rupees. There are many cartels operating in this country, so at least this will tell the people. This will work as an advocacy program for the commission. They will tell the people that if there is a cartel operating, they should come to us, file complaint with us and we will look into it. The major producers of cement in India include ACC, Grassim, Ambuja Cements and Ultratech. These companies dominate the industry with nearly 60% market share. The Competition Commission of India has directed the cement companies to pay the imposed fine in 90 days. The Commission has directed the Cement Manufacturers Association to stop collecting pricing data and circulating output and dispatch details to its members. The main role of CCI is to promote and regulate competition in the markets of India with having ultimate focus on consumer benefits. With camera person Suresh, Aruna Thakur, Rajya Sabha TV. The order imposes penalty of 5% of turnover, whereas the Act specifically says that it should be 10% of turnover or three times the profit, whichever is higher, if cartelization is established. Now, my question to you, sir, first to you question is, why this leniency when it is 10% and three times the profit specifically written for class, uh, cartelization in the CCI Act? then why has the CCI, do you think the CCI is actually authorized to go ahead and on its own reduce the penalty to 5%? It was up to the CCI to impose a penalty under section 27, which could be up to three times the annual profits 
or up to 10 percent of the turnover. In fact, uh, it was not necessary that it should be 10 percent or three times the profit it was up to depending on the severity of the case. Whichever is higher. Whichever is higher. CCI in its wisdom decided to impose a penalty of 50 percent of the profits for the duration during which the cartel was found to be existing. That is after 20th May 2009 till the end of 2011. And incidentally that figure was considerably high over 6,000 crores. Mm -hmm. So it is not this that the CCI was lenient in this particular case. If you look at the figures of penalty imposed on each of the 11 uh, cement manufacturing companies, this was considerably high in many cases 1,100 <coughs> or more crores. Even the association, the first respondent in this case was imposed a penalty of 10 percent mm -hmm. of their turnover. So CCI examines the case, each case on its own merits and then decides on the quantum of penalty. I'll, I'll get in Mr. Dal. Uh, sir, do you actually feel that what uh, sir is saying is, f that's the right argument, that could be one, but the other point is, was that the highest amount, 6,300 crores? Or could, have we, could we have uh, gone a little higher because this has been going on since the last nearly seven years and established complaints floating all across the ministry, all across the government. There's nothing new. The punishment comes late and then 6,300, is that the highest or we could have gone beyond as per the law? Several of the cartels which have been punished by the CCI, whether it is the LPG cylinder manufacturers mm -hmm. or whether it is a cement one, they took note of the banking cartel and so alleged banking cartel and so on and so forth. They have been functioning under the on the platform of the association, association because the associ all associations have a legitimate role. Yeah. Uh, Anti-dumping, taxation issues, infrastructure issues, policy largely, policy, and so on and so forth. But there are certain. Uh, things which under the competition law they ought not to be doing and they should stay scrupulously away from them. In the US you will not find for example two manufacturers of car manufacturers sitting together for a dinner because they may be suspected of and here polluting. Was, here there was complete exchange of data and sales figures no, and uh, coordination but, but let me, output. But let me complete the thing. Uh, uh, the uh, they said that they have been asked by the ministry to collect this data and furnish it to the ministry, both of wholesale prices and of retail prices. And that brings me to my third point, that the ignorance of the spirit of the law is being reflected in the directions given by the ministry, and that's the industry ministry, mm -hmm. mind you, to the cement people who are alleged to be cartelizing, they may or may not be cartelizing, but they are alleged to be cartelizing and to the very same association, you are giving a direction to collect sensitive information about wholesale and retail prices under the umbrella of the association and furnish it to the government. Mm -hmm. That means here is a leading important ministry. It is unaware that its own direction to the association can defeat the very purpose for which it is asking for the information. Right, right. Now, even if they were given directions by the ministry, they could have done the same thing in quite a different way by putting Chinese walls within the association or uh, appointing an outside agency, let's say one of the big four or somebody, to collect this information and furnish it to the ministry but not allow it to be shared, the, the violation established is not that they were collecting information and furnishing it to the ministry. They were facilitating cartelization. They were sharing it amongst themselves. Facilitating. And, yeah. and thereby. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so, so I'll the, get in, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dhan. The point that sir is making, do you think that mechanism where the uh, industry ministry on one hand is trying to through the associations, coordinate certain activities. On the other hand, the same association 
due to the same uh, you know uh, responsibilities being expected from the government falls into traps like cartelization absolutely see these are exactly the issues which are sought to be addressed in the proposed national competition policy the government had appointed a committee under my chairmanship uh, last year right. to develop a draft of national competition policy mm -hmm. the earlier draft was developed when mr dhal was yes. in the commission and this would mandate when it, whenever it is approved by the government that all the ministries should be mandated they should be asked compulsorily to look into their systems and procedures and bring them in alignment with the spirit of the competition act mm. that such practices are removed they are tweaked so unwittingly unknowingly this was only one case but a large number of ministries not only collecting data but their own policies and procedures would be such that this would give rise to anti competitive practices, practices. apart from this it was intended that all the ministries should be asked to have a fresh look at their procedures rules and regulations tweak them wherever they could so the point is that uh, the uh, issue has been taken by the Absolutely. horn and it is in the process Absolutely. of being uh, consulted consensus and evolved but on that one note, point on that note sir it's time mm -hmm. for us to head into a break when we come back we will tell you about the Com competition commission and its role Welcome back. The Competition Commission is the body established by law to eliminate practices having adverse effect on competition, monopoly, promoting and sustaining competition, and also for protecting the interest of the consumers. Though the competition law was enacted in 2002, the act is being brought into force in a phased manner, and it is yet to evolve. There was a feeling among policy makers that high cement prices are a drag on India's ability to build world-class infrastructure and homes for millions of its citizens. Reflecting this, Parliamentary Standing Committee on Commerce had said in its report that cement manufacturing companies have ramped up their production capability but are reluctant to achieve maximum production level due to which there is a constant scarcity of cement in the market delivering high profits to the companies. The government departments, which are not discharging the sovereign functions of the government, are also covered within the definition of enterprise. So if the government, even the public sector under, undertaking, or the government departments, which are discharging the policy functions, which are in the nature of commercial, in that case, all the activities of those government departments are also under the jurisdictional uh, threshold of the uh, CCI. Let's look at the procedure that the Competition Commission adopts before it passes final orders. On the receipt of a complaint, the Commission takes a view on the first side whether the matter requires an inquiry or not. Once it decides that inquiry is required, it directs the Director Journal to investigate into the matter. The Director Journal then investigates and submits a report on his findings within prescribed time frame. If the report of the Director Journal finds violation of law, then the Commission may, if it feels like, conduct further inquiries. Once the inquiry reveals cartelization, it may impose penalty not more than 10% of the average of the turnover for the last three years or a penalty of up to three times of its profits for each year of the violation. Competition Commission should liberally hear the charged parties before forming prima facie opinion and at the same time they should adopt a higher standard of proof before referring the matter to Director General to carry out investigation, lot of money, lot of time, lot of hassles can be saved if uh, prima facie views are formed after hearing the parties and after having adopted higher standard of proof. The Competition Commission was established after the MRTP Commission was repealed. The Commission consists of a chairperson assisted by a maximum of six other members appointed by the central government. 
the competition commission is also actively involved in the formulation of country's economic policies advising the government on the competition policy taking measures for promotion of competition advocacy and creating awareness and imparting training on competition issues all orders of the commission can be challenged in the competition appellate tribunal one of the sectoral conflict can be seen in the banking laws amendment bill which excludes all the mergers of banks from the competition act and which can also provoke other sectoral regulators to exclude themselves from the competition act with camera person suresh aruna thakur rajya sabha tv the monopolies and restricted trade practices commission mrtpc which earlier regulated this aspect of business was dissolved and pending mrtpc investigations and cases were transferred to the competition commission but before we go on to that my question to you sir is and very pointedly brought out by the adg of cci former adg the word stresses the law the statute has huge stress on the word prima facie view of the commission before handing it over to the dg now that view is going to, is the basically is at the uh, pivot do you think that is what should determine what investigation should happen or should be should there be a separate body because it's it's a huge area of investigation or that's sufficient the way it has been written decision whether an inquiry is to be initiated or not should rest with the six seven wise men who constitute the commission. the commission they should take a good look at it and only after they are satisfied they should hand it over for investigation to the dg and at the dg level the investigation cannot be closed the dg has to report back to the commission that you directed me after your prima facie satisfaction this is what i have found now the it is up to the commission to agree disagree with the dg and finally to close the case or to impose Does a the penalty the present statute actually reflect what you're saying the, as it stands right now that the commission has the right to revisit even after the dg's report and if it feels like can close does it reflect that yeah yeah the commission can agree or disagree with the dg there is a little bit of a missing provision there in express terms but in terms of the spirit and the how the act would operate it gives the complete freedom to the commission to agree or to disagree mm -hmm. so uh, uh, and the dg meanwhile is supposed to carry out his investigation in a semi autonomous kind of way right that is to say he is not to be influenced either by the commission or by anybody else the dg is appointed directly by the government and not by the commission so uh, that's how it is framed now i bring in mr dhanin kumar on that point see but well, so explained it very well and he made it clear how the system is working as of now and the minute point that he wanted to elaborate on is exactly what i would like your uh, reaction on once the dg has given his report does the com competition commission in view of new data or information that has that it has come by can it revisit the entire thing and actually call for closure of the case the short answer to your question is yes let me elaborate a little bit first of all let me tell you that under the competition commission uh, uh, under the act the competition commission under section 18 it is the mandated duty the words used are it shall be the duty of the competition commission to eliminate practices prevailing in the market in so and so so and so remove the anti competitive practices yeah. and therefore the commission does not have to necessarily wait for an information it's not a complaint the information to trickle to the commission has so motor powers has your motor powers also mm -hmm. and commission has been doing it uh, wherever it feels that it needs to intervene it has been doing it the powers were notified uh in may 2009 in fact let me also tell you about uh, the practices prevailing in india gradually the awareness is increasing Increase. like this now having said this now in terms of the powers of the competition commission commission is fully empowered to revisit 
send the case back to the DG to conduct fresh investigation, uh, take any more material. It has been doing it in the past and there is no bar as such. But Mr. Dhal is absolutely right. There is a small technical hitch and in the committee which I was asked to chair, the government also asked to suggest amendments in the act to tweak it wherever it was considered necessary, mm -hmm. the gaps which were found. And among the various proposals which we have formulated and sent to the government, this is also one of them. So for all practical purposes, the entire CCI as it exists right now has got just one center of power and that is the commission. That's right. Right. Uh, it's time for us to head into a break. When we come back, we will show you an interview of lawyer Manas Kumar Chaudhary. Welcome back. My colleague Aruna Thakur spoke to partner with law firm Khetan, Mr. Manas Chaudhary, and tried to get his point of view. If we see the Competition Act, it is almost 11 or 12 years old. But the Competition Commission of India was established in 2009. So how do you see the working of CCI presently? This is a very complex law and we really lack the kind of knowledge what we should have. We don't have at least in the initial years, that is the time when the act came into being, that is 2002-03, and thereafter it became operational in May 2009. Even between that period, that is between 2003 January till 2009 May, there was not much activity amongst various stakeholders to really understand this law. So unless the stakeholders take initiative to understand this law, it would be very difficult for the Commission to implement this law because it should be a both-way traffic. It cannot be just one-way traffic. Presently, we have seen some sectoral regulators conflict with the CCI. So, what is the reason behind this conflict? Whatever we, including the public sector, are all within the ambit of the competition law scrutiny. There is no specific sector which should come within the ambit of Competition Act. Whereas, in case of, say, electricity, it would be only the electricity, that is transmission, generation, distribution, would only come within the ambit of the Electricity Act. And during that course of its deliberations relating to the electricity sector, if some issues of competition arise, they may, they may look into those issues, but they really cannot go whole hog understanding the competition issues because the basic parameters which are defined in the Competition Act are not available on those sector regulatory acts. So they will either have to fall back upon the Competition Commission or the Competition Act or there should be some kind of harmonization which should be worked out between the regulators and the Competition Commission. For example, the recent debate on whether or not the banks should look after the mergers amalgamations. The role provided to Competition Commission has led it to come into conflict with other regulators relating to conflict of jurisdiction. The most recent one is between Competition Commission and other sec sectoral regulators like Reserve Bank of India and Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. My question to you, sir, is do we have a conflict resolution mechanism in a situation like this? And if so, then what is the problem? Where is the matter stuck? First of all, let me tell you that intrinsically there is no conflict because the Competition Commission is considered to be the specialized body to look into matters uh, involving competition, um, monopoly, uh, on so monopoly so and so on. Aspects. And in terms of the combinations also, acquisitions and mergers and takeovers, which could lead into situations when similar situations emerge and uh, there could be uh, emergence of dominant players and so on, or abuses and so on, things like this. But question is this, that there are a number of other issues which <laughs> should legitimately be uh, looked into by the sectoral regulators in terms of the standards, in terms of the quality of uh, service to the consumers or the price fixation and so on and so forth. So the roles are defined under the respective act. But let's bear in mind that the Competition Act came into being in terms of its full enforcement much later and the sectoral regulators 
and their acts came into being earlier. earlier. So in that is most, why. In most other countries, the antitrust legislations had come much earlier and the subsequent regulatory mechanism came later. And therefore, this is misunderstanding or confusion. Under the proposed national competition policy, which earlier Mr. Dhal, when he was chairing it, he had suggested, and now in the last committee, which I was chairing, comprising a few experts and after several confabulations and consultations, we have also suggested, let there be a mechanism by which these situations can be resolved, but ultimately, we have to bear in mind that this is a specialized body which comprises of experts, experts in economics, experts in fields. econometrics, law and so on, to look into only competition related issues, yes, while the other agencies are not so well equipped to look into competition. On other aspects, let them look into it. Right. I'll bring in uh, uh, Mr. Dahal, sir. Um, the sectoral exemptions, as you were pointing, are they justified, the demands, should it be there or should it continue the way it is continuing right now? That these uh, various regulators, including the Competition Commission, sooner rather than later evolve mechanisms for this co inter say co coordination. Mm -hmm. That is very critical. On the exemption issues, I, it was implied in my reply mm -hmm. that, the, that there is, really speaking, no ground for exemption Exemptions. in any sector, including the shipping sector, which is making demands, uh -huh. including the telecom sector, which has been making demands, including the banking sector. Right. When the Reserve Bank decides whether a bank A is to be merged with a bank B, the Reserve Bank will take into account, account prudential issues, mm. right? What is the capital base of this bank? What is its capacity in terms of... The competition uh, will be looked at. The competition by. issue will, will be, be decided by the Competition Commission. Right. Sir. So there is no uh, reason really to bring about this dichotomy in such a stark manner. Right. Uh, so that's all we have uh, time for. Thank you, sir, for joining us on the show and discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can also watch our shows on the YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV.